Hi guys, it's Just Monis Fiction and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. I'm going to be discussing my favorite and the least favorite books from the first half of the year. All right guys, so I did this tag last year and it was a lot of fun. So there are 13 different questions that really help summarize how I felt about the books I read in the first half of the year. So like favorite book, least favorite book, favorite sequel, all that jazz. Now if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's do the mid-year freakout tag. All right, so starting off with a bang, the first question is, what was your favorite read so far this year? I narrowed it down to two. I could not pick between these two. So first up, we have No Tomorrow, and this is by Carrie and Cole. So this is following Piper, and one day when she's on her lunch break, she sees this very handsome guy playing guitar, and she immediately knows that she wants to meet him and get to know him. So she soon finds out that he is actually homeless, but that doesn't stop her from pursuing a relationship with him. And it is their love story spanning 14 years, this book is so emotional, so much happens with this couple, and it has great mental health represent representation. It's just, it's so good. So I highly recommend if you have not read this yet, I absolutely loved it. Definitely check trigger warnings. There are some very upsetting things that do happen in this book, but it was such an amazing read. And the next book that I absolutely could not put down is The Words by A. Jade. This book is so long. But so good. So it is following Phoenix and Lennon. Phoenix is an aspiring musician and he's trying to graduate high school. Unfortunately, he's failing one of his classes, so he enlists Lennon to tutor him. Now, Lennon is this girl that is being bullied in school because of her weight, but she's just a good person. Like, she is so selfless. I love her character. So they end up forming this friendship and then eventually it turns into a relationship. Then Phoenix does something absolutely terrible and they don't speak for eight years and then through some interesting circumstances they end up meeting again as adults and it's so good I love this I love the body positivity I just loved Lennon as a character and then it also is really good dyslexia representation so if you have been thinking about reading this please pick it up I know it's long but it's so worth it it's so good and definitely one of my favorite reads of the year all right and next up was best sequel that you read in the first half of the year so it was a toss-up it was either going to be between House of Sky and Breath, which I did really enjoy. However, I liked House of Earth and Blood a little bit more. And also I feel like the ending of House and Sky and Breath is really what saved that book for me. A lot of that book was like super info dumpy and it was kind of a chore to get through. Um, I'm sure all of that information is going to be very important in the next book. However, it didn't seem very necessary for that book. Anyway, I ended up picking The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I know I'm probably going to get some hate for this. I like this book. I think I rated it four stars. It is probably my least favorite book in that series, but it was still a good time. I liked seeing what was happening with these characters, and we got Kaz's POV, which was really nice, and overall, I liked it. So I have a whole spoiler for review. I'll leave in the cards in the description. But yes, best sequel definitely goes to The War of the Two Queens. All right, next up is a new release you haven't read yet, but you want to. So first up, we have For the Throne, and this is by Anna Witten. This is the second book after For the Wolf. I adored For the Wolf. It was just a really fun story, super atmospheric, and I really want to wait to jump into this until the autumn, just because it gives me like fall vibes, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. I love these characters. I can't wait to see what happens. And then I also want to read Glow, the fourth book in the Plated Prisoner series. I finished Glint, read the second book a long time ago, and still haven't picked up the third one. It seems like the books get progressively spicier. Like I was seeing TikTok quotes for like gleam and glow and I was like wow that is not what's happening in these first two books so very interested in that but I definitely want to finish the series I know once I read it I'm gonna absolutely love it it's just for some reason I can't start book three and then last up is give me more by Sarah Kate so I read praise by Sarah Kate and I loved it I think it's called the salacious players club and I still have to read eyes on me which is book two and then book three sounds so good all the romance booktubers are talking about it so can't wait to jump into that. All right, the next prompt is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I narrowed it down to four. This was really tough. There are a lot of books that I'm very much looking forward to that are releasing in the second half of the year. So for fantasy romance, I have two. First up, we have A Light in the Flame by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the sequel to A Shadow in the Ember, which is the From Blood and Ash prequel series. 
I cannot wait to read this book. I need to know what happens with Nyctos, and it should be really good. Now, I will be doing a full recap video of A Shadow in the Ember that should be released two weeks prior to A Light in the Flame being released. I believe that release date is November or December. But yeah, look forward to that. But overall, I cannot wait to read that book. And then the second fantasy romance is Zodiac Academy 8. I'm pretty sure this is the conclusion to the series. I think there's only supposed to be eight books, so I know it's going to be intense and I'm probably going to cry, but I love this series. It's one of my favorite series of all time, so I cannot wait to read that last book. So then moving to contemporary romance, I have two. First up is Reverse by Kate Stewart. So I just read Drive by Kate Stewart and loved it. It is a rock star romance involving a love triangle, and it's so good. So Kate Stewart just announced she's going to have a companion book, Reverse, that is set to come out this summer. So excited for that. I guess that's not really later in the year, but... It's one of my most anticipated releases. And then last up is It Starts With Us, which is a companion book to It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I absolutely adore It Ends With Us. It's one of my favorite Coho books. So I just need more Atlas in my life. And if this book gives me that, I will be happy. So those are all my most anticipated releases. All right, next up is my biggest disappointments from the first half of the year. So when I was compiling this list, I realized that I feel like these particular books that I'm about to talk about, I have three. I had really high expectations going in, and that's probably why I didn't enjoy them. So first up, we have Hate by Tate James. This is a reverse harem MMA romance, and I just found the characters really juvenile, and I didn't really believe the romance, and it just it didn't work for me. So I ended up DNFing the first book. I won't be continuing with that series, and I just really wanted to love it, and I didn't. So then we also have Something Wilder by Christina Lauren, and I've read other books by these authors that I've adored, and this one had a completely different vibe from their other books. So it's more of an adventure with a second chance romance kind of happening like in the background. Um, and it's really between like a father and daughter and like her kind of discovering things about her father and her past. And I don't know, I just was not a fan of it. I was expecting like this very emotional second chance romance and that's not what I got. And then last up is gonna be a surprise for a lot of people. I just read Twisted Love. The audiobooks were finally released. Um, if you know my channel, I listen to primarily audio. Um, I physically read some books, but most of the time it's just audiobooks. I didn't like this that much. It was okay. It, a lot happens in this book, and it is fairly short. And I just feel like some parts were like rushed through really quickly, and we could have like all of those parts could have been expanded upon like a lot. Um, I can't even go into it without really giving away spoilers, but like it felt like we learn about a problem and then the resolution comes like two pages later. Um, I don't know. I've heard the second book is a lot better, so I will at least try out the second one before I end up giving up on the series. But let me know in the comments if you didn't like the first book but you really enjoyed the second book because I'm just curious. The next prompt is the biggest surprise of the first half of the year. This was really easy. It is the Stay With Me series by Nicole Fiorina. This series is bonkers. I have never read a series quite like this. It is ridiculous, but also amazing. Like I was completely obsessed and engrossed in the series. I couldn't put these books down and yet they weren't amazing. So I could totally see someone picking this book series up because I've been talking about it all over Instagram and saying they hate it, and I will totally understand why. There are so many flaws with this book, but also, it was great. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining, but overall, this is following Ollie and our main character, who ends up being shipped to this reformatory college because she is labeled a sociopath, and then she meets Ollie, who has a disorder that makes him feel emotions too deeply, and he tries to get our main character like out of her shell, and they form a relationship, and it is their relationship over the years they are in this reformatory college and then also when they are released and it is just a crazy wild ride. There is a serial killer, there is impersonators, there are like orgy type things. It is so interesting, but yeah, definitely check it out. You might not like it, you might. I love this and it was definitely the biggest surprise read of the year. All right, the next prompt is a favorite new to me author I discovered in the first half of the year. So I have two for this, and they are both romance authors. That is because I really dove headfirst into the romance genre in the beginning of the year. I have no regrets. I am loving every minute of it. So first up, we have Gianna Darling. So she wrote the Fallen Motorcycle Club series. I have a full spoiler-free series recap. I will leave in the cards in the description. I love this series. It is so good. 
So I actually binged this series because Tori from Novel Life and then Jess from Peace Love Books were hosting a readathon, and that readathon was so much fun. Caution to the wind, the last book in this series should be coming out at some point, hopefully this year. I'm really looking forward to it, but I really love Gianna Darling's writing. I also read her mafia duet, When Heroes Rise and When Villains Fall. Nope, that's wrong. When Heroes Fall and When Villains Rise, and it's probably one of my favorite mafia duets. It's so good. Love the romance. So then another author that I recently discovered is Michaela Smeltzer. So I ended up reading The Confidence of Wildflowers and The Resurrection of Wildflowers. I love that duet. It's age gap. So good. It gets very mixed reviews, but I was someone who really, really enjoyed it. And then I read Sweet Dandelion, and this is definitely my favorite book by her. It is a guidance counselor student romance, and it is perfection. If you love that trope, definitely check this book out. It is so good, but I definitely want to read more of Michaela Smeltzer's backlist. Next up is new favorite fictional crush. I have two. First up is Rune Nannan, Crown Prince of the Valbar and Faye, Daddy Rune. Love everything about him, especially that TikTok noise. It's driving my husband insane every time he hears it. But I liked him, or I liked Rune in House and Earth and Blood. I loved him in House and Sky and Breath. So by far, favorite crush. And then a surprising crush is Ollie Masters from Stay With Me. So I don't really like the like brooding, angry character that like doesn't show emotion. And Ollie is the exact opposite of that. He feels emotions so hard. And I just, I love him. I love him so much, especially whoever narrated the audiobook for him. The narrator did an excellent job. He has like a light British accent and it's glorious. So both of those men, I am just completely obsessed with. Next prompt is your new favorite character from the first half of the year. This was really easy. It is Reaver. So he is a young Draken in A Shadow in the Ember. And then we get to see him as a full-blown adult in The War of the Two Queens. And I just love the relationship he has with Kieran. They completely torture each other. And it's just really fun. So I loved that addition of him as a character. I know he's going to be one of my favorite characters in both series. So definitely my favorite so far. Next up is a book that made you cry. So I have an entire emotional damage recommendation video that I'll leave down in the description if you want to check that out. If I had to narrow it down to two, I would say the Full Tilt duology. This duet is so emotional and so sad, but so good. Probably one of my favorite like emotional duets. Um, check trigger warnings, but I loved every minute of this book series. And then the second one, if I can reach it, the Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaela Smeltzer, this duet. Actually, this particular book made me sob. So I was not mentally prepared for a very tragic event that takes place at the end of this book. And I just, as soon as it happens, I just immediately started crying. I just didn't understand how our characters were gonna move past that event. And it was just, it hurt, it hurt so much. So yeah, definitely made me sad. But like I said, I love this duet. Definitely check it out. Next up is a book that made you happy. So I have two. First up is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This book is getting a lot of hype right now. A lot of people are talking about it. And I think it's well-deserved. I really enjoyed this book. It had moments where I was literally laughing out loud. The humor in this book is superb. I loved it. So this was just a really fun and like light read. And then the other one is Twin Crowns, and this is by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. I recently finished this, and it's just a fun YA fantasy. I haven't been reading a lot of YA, and this reminded me that I really do love that genre. So I highly recommend this is a new release, and it was fun. It has witches, has every trope you could possibly imagine, and it was just really, really fun. And next up is the most beautiful book you purchased in the beginning of the year. So for that, I have Blood Scion, and this is from Fairy Loot. This book is absolutely stunning, and that is all I can tell you about it because I have not actually read this book yet. I plan on reading it next month in July. I've heard really good things, the reviews are really good, but this book is just absolutely gorgeous. I love it, it's the prettiest book I own. And last up is what books do you need to finish by the end of the year? So this list would go on forever if I actually named all the books I wanted to read. So just for the books that I'm currently reading that I really want to finish or the series I want to finish, we have the Off Balance series. I am currently on book three. I totally understand why the series is controversial. There are parts that are very cringy, but I am living for the drama and the toxicity of this relationship. It is so good. And then also the Hades Hangman series. I am on book two. MC Romance, absolutely loving it. I want to finish the Zodiac Academy series, the Plated Prisoner series, and then I'm currently reading Manacled, which is not a series. However, it is over a thousand pages, so it should count as a series. 
Um, the Spotify version actually is out and it's as good as they say. I, if you like Harry Potter and you like The Handmaid's Tale, read Manacled or listen to Manacled. It's amazing so far. I'm really, really enjoying it. So yeah, those are some series that I really want to finish, but like I said, there are just so many books that I want to read by the end of the year. All right, guys, thank you for watching my mid-year freakout tag. Please let me know down in the comments below what was your favorite and least favorite read of 2022 so far. I said this already. I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I'll see you all next week. Bye.